Okay, Kyle. Let Hello. us see what you've made since our last episode of Drunk Knitting. All right. Ta-da! It's a thing. It is a thing. There are a few special parts of it, like Design this. Design features. And there's another one here. Things that I'm not sure why they happened, but they did happen. Um, it started out 42 stitches across because 42 is the number to life, the universe, and everything. And then somehow a few minutes later, an hour later or so, it had 58 stitches across. Uh, and it sort of varied back and forth. I uh, figured out how to double up the stitches to bring the number back down, but uh, that was definitely a challenge. Um, and then there's spots like this where I have like no idea, but uh, on the whole, uh, I think it went okay. You know, for a first thing, it's not bad at all. I can see some yarn overs. Those are the holes. Okay. That'd be my best guess anyway, without like seeing it in my hands. But now you need to learn how to finish. Right, right. Okay. This part is pretty easy. What you wanna do is called binding off. And binding off is what you do when you're finished and want there to be an end. Now with knitting, if you were to just, like in crochet, you can just cut a little bit of yarn, pull it through your hole, and you're, you're good to go, right? In knitting, if you were to take these off the needle, your whole thing would unravel. Right, right, right. You would like, no longer have a thing. If you pull the string when there's no needle in there, it just goes away. It, yep. Disaster happens. Yes. So I always tell people that for me, binding off reminds me of leapfrog. Okay. Because the very first stitch, you just knit it like normal. Then you knit a second stitch. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So I'm going to wrap the yarn around. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the stitch. Yep. Like pull it off the needle and everything? Yeah. All right. Okay, I pulled it off the needle. Okay, do that again, you need two to start. Okay. All right, I have two. two. Okay, so you got your two stitches. You are going to pick up that first stitch by putting your needle, or let me see, putting your needle in there, and you leapfrog it over the second stitch and drop it off. <clears throat> so now you only have one. I'm gonna do that again for you. Okay. So I'll knit my next stitch. I'm going back to the first stitch and I Put my needle in there. Oh, am I switching hands? Nope. So I'm knitting this with my left hand, yes? Uh, your working needle should be in your right hand. The old stitch is in your left hand. Just like you're knitting a row. Same thing you've been doing. Right. So my working, wait a minute, I'm lost here already. So I have okay. two stitches on my right hand needle. Yes. Okay, and then I take my right hand needle and do what with it? No, I do nothing with the right oh, hand. Oh, I'm sorry, you're, you're right, your left hand needle. Okay. So you pick up that first stitch. See, right. I've got it right here. Okay, and pull it back. Over. Over the second one. Yep, and then over the tip of the needle and let it go. Let the whole thing go. Yep, and now you've just got one stitch on your right hand needle. Right. I have one stitch. Yep. And you keep doing that. You knit the next stitch and take the stitch closest to the, closest to your right hand, your old stitch, and you leapfrog it over. Okay, so I'm going to, let's see. Suddenly got very tight. Wasn't that the last stitch I just did? Um. All right. Let me try this again. 
I'm making a second stitch. It's very tight. Yeah, you do want to make sure that you don't hold it too tight. Otherwise, it'll kind of shrink in. You'll have a curved edge. You don't want that. Okay, I'm going to make another stitch. And if you look, you can see yeah. how my bound off stitches are kind of creating a line so it'll look just like your cast on row. Really? Okay. And I'm going to take this one. Pull it over that one. Mm -hmm. And off the needle. Oh, and off the needle. Wait a minute. Uh, I think you're on the wrong hand, Kyle. All right. How do I back up? <laughs> Let's see. That's a little hard to describe over Zoom. Okay, yeah. Um, pass... For now, pass that stitch over to your right hand needle. This one. Mm -hmm. Your right hand is always your working hand. Okay. Okay. So everything new that you do is on your right hand. Right. The only thing we're doing with this left hand is picking up the needle or the stitch on our right hand needle and passing it over the stitch on the right hand needle. So each time you get two stitches on your right hand. I'm going to pull this last one out. Okay. Okay. Pull it out and kind of pick it back up. Don't let it unravel. Yeah, now I have this weird stitch, which was the first one I did. It's really tight on there. I'm just if you give a, give a tug on your working yarn and it could unravel a little bit and you can pick them back up. I'm going to start this again. Okay. So I'm going to knit my mangled stitch and the one next to it. Yep. Together. Not together. You knit each stitch. Well, there's like a mangled extra one here. Oh, okay, okay. There's like two stitches stuck in that one, which I Yeah, knit that one together. You're fine. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it is. It's... So I'm just going to pretend that it's one. Okay. So now there's one stitch on my working hand. And I'm going to put another stitch on my working needle, right? That's right. Second stitch on my working needle. Hold it off. Yes. Now I'm okay. Going to... Now take your left hand needle. Left hand needle. Grab the first stitch you knit on your right hand needle. First stitch. And lift it over the second stitch and off the needle. The second stitch stays on. Right. And now you only have one stitch on your right needle. Off the needle. Oh, and then I pull it off the second needle, right? Uh, you pull it off your right-hand needle. So it's still on my left-hand needle. Do I let go of it from there? Yep. Okay. That was my problem, I think. Okay. And now knit another stitch. Another stitch. And do it again. Pull that off and then pull this one off and over. I didn't let go of it last time. I gotcha. Off and off. And then another one. You see how it looks like leapfrog? Not sure. Something's happening though. Should hopefully be decreasing your number of working stitches. Hopefully. And getting this bind off edge right here. So, um, what are you drinking, John? You know, I'm just going with an old fashioned. That has been my mood lately, is old fashions. So, what is in an old fashioned? Um, so, bitters, whiskey, and a sugar cube muddled up, and ice. Okay. Uh, usually I drink Basil Hayden's, but I could not get the cork out today, so it's Eagle Trace. Is that the whiskey? Yep. You should remember Eagle Trace. You and Dill had a very interesting weekend with a bottle of Eagle Trace in Wisconsin. We made snow angels in our pajamas. Oh, of course I remember that. <laughs> At least Marshall was there. Maybe I should yes. get her into trouble. Hanging out with knitters.
And then you took us running in sub zero weather when yeah. we were hungover. We went running and through the snow and we saw cows. Yes. I remember as we approached the cow, it started looking at us and then it slowly turned its head and watched us go past. <laughs> it was a good weekend. And then Elise and I drove a car on a lake. Yeah, I would not. And it was um, part of a scene from American Gods, this yep. car on the lake. So we went to go see that. Okay. So let me ask you a question about how to hold the needles. Um, because like I keep pressing them up against my chest to do something and I'm thinking that there's probably a, a better way to do that. So a lot of things just come with practice. Um, finding something that's comfortable. Like for me, I don't need to do that, but I do remember the phase where I did push it up against my stomach. Um, and you'll always laugh like when you see old things with people knitting like this in TV shows and cartoons. Oh. People always have like a different method of holding. I'm trying to remember how my grandma did it because she had a weird style. And then there's other ways to hold the yarn. You know, I'm teaching you like a throwing method, which is what I'm the most comfortable with. There's also picking or continental where everything's in your left hand. Left, yes. So a lot of it just comes from doing something over and over again and then finding what works for you. Right. Training my muscle memory. Yeah. So how much yarn have you gotten since you started? <laughs> so I posted to my Facebook and, you know, said, Hey, I'm thinking of a new project. What yarn should I get? And there was much advice and all of the advice seemed to be, bad advice because everybody was saying you need a storage locker and buy all of the yarn because you're going to get all of the yarn so you might as well get a place for it now and i'm like this this does not seem to be uh responsible advice from people on the internet so i did buy three skeins of uh local yarn from from Haystack Yards, Yarns. That's very pretty. Which came on the, the recommendation of some people from the internet and it had the benefit of being so close that I could pick it up locally with the bicycle. That's perfect. So. Yeah, yarn storage can get a little out of hand. I'll show you my shame right there. That uh, is all yarn. And that's um, not including the full tub of Icelandic yarn I have, which is, you know, my working area. Right. So do you have a source for Icelandic yarn now? Is there somebody we're working with? Nobody that we're working with, but I have been using, um, just because it's what everybody seems to use. I don't even want to say the name because I don't want to butcher it, but the Alafoslopi. Okay. And I've got two different kinds. Um, I've got that, and then I've got the Letlopi. Okay. The so Al Alifos. Yeah. Alifos. This is like the bulkier one, and this one's a little thinner. Um, they call this worsted, but this is bulky to me. And every gauge swatch I've done has made it seem, you know, size 10 and a half, 11 needles. So you said worsted. Um, and when... I was talking to people on the internet about yarn. I realized I don't know how to describe yarn. So what are the words that I need to know? So uh, worsted is like your standard. Um, if you look at older books, they're going to call that Aran weight, A-A-A-R-A-N. Um, but worsted is like just medium. It's okay. kind of good for everything. Bulky okay. is really thick. So when you want something quick, bulky is the way to go. And then there's lace weight or sock weight, uh, which is like your really thin strands. Um, I'm trying to see if I have an example bulky. 
right here. You would think I would have it right in sight because I have so much flipping yarn. Oh, here we go. So this is a uh, Knit Picks Tough Puff. And you can see how thick that is compared to Gee, yeah. a standard worsted weight. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's all different kinds of yarn that you'll find as you go. Worsted is your workhorse yarn, your standard, most patterns are written for worsted weight. When you start getting into like sock knitting, which is its whole own cult, then you'll get really into like the lace weight and sock weight yarns. So um, are we using sock weight yarns for the TV socks in the book? No, because the standard that I keep seeing with the older Icelandic style of doing those is all worsted. Okay. Like, I think the idea is to make a really thick pair of socks for cold Iceland weather. And I remember being in a car with some people from Iceland who were talking about their grandmothers literally knitting socks while watching television. So apparently it's a common thing. <laughs> And My issue with socks is like, I get really bad second sock syndrome. So I make one and then I never knit the other one. And there's a way to do two at once on circular needles, but I just, I always get frustrated with like the first two rounds of it and hate it. So I have a lot of like one socks floating around. So I talked to somebody last week who has a degree in, in textiles and she says she kept her first sock, which is a terrible thing, and that when people get discouraged, she shows them her first sock. Uh, so... Are you at the end? Things have happened, Joan. Um, what did you do? I thought I was done, but I seem to have ended up with um, three stitches. We'll keep going until you only have one stitch. Very end. I think these are on the wrong, wrong needle. These are on my right-hand needle. I don't know how you did that. I don't know how I did that either, but I think it's remarkable. It's, yeah, just bind them off and we'll figure it out. Bind them off, so do the same thing, just mm -hmm. like do it backwards? Yep. All right, so there's gonna be a little tail on this one, I think. Well, we're gonna style this, this little scarf of yours to where it won't, it's not gonna matter. Well, this is a very special scarf. Because no one is gonna be able to make a pattern for this. This is, this is unique, Joan. You know, I'm not going to name names, but I'm sure there's a, I can think of one or two designers out there in the world that would create that scarf just like that and call it a amazing design. Probably <laughs> sell a thousand copies of it. Oh my gosh. So now all I need to know is learn all of these in jokes. All of these, these names I should know. <laughs> who are making weird things on Ravelry that everybody's buying for a reason that nobody seems to be able to understand. All right. All right, so now I have this. You have one stitch. One stitch. Okay, so what you're gonna do, do you have a pair of scissors handy? I have a switchblade. Good enough. I have my hands, now I have scissors. I organized my desk, so we're good. All right, so cut your, cut your yarn, leave yourself a tail. If you were gonna seam the two ends together, you'd leave a longer tail than this, but we're not gonna do that because you have two different sizes between your cast on and your bind off. All right, and you are just gonna pull that tail through, close it off. Just like I'm, like I'm nodding it, yep. right? Pull it through, all right? And then pull it tight? Yep. Only happens once. All right. So you've made a thing. I made a thing. Ta-da! Wow. Now your next step would be seaming in ends. Um, so you can do that with either a crochet hook or a tapestry needle. I think this calls for a toast first, Joan. It does. I'll toast with my Icelandic booze that I'm trying to get through. No offense, Iceland, but Jesus. <laughs> Not the Brennivan, please. <laughs> I gotta finish it. Actually, I was, I was looking before we came here. I still have the bottle that I bought in like 2000. And it's, 
had a little bit drunk out of it, but uh, it's going to be here when the cockroaches own the world. To my thing. To your thing. So to weave in ends, you just want to use a crochet hook or a tapestry needle. You just go through and just kind of weave that sucker either in the sides you know, kind of run it through. You can also run it through your up and down bumps. You just want to do enough to where it's not going to come undone later in life. That's, basically pull it through these stitch holes, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the easy part. All right. And now we're going to talk like what we can do with what you've made. My original thought was for you to make a cowl out of it, but because you have the two different sizes, it won't seem together properly. So I was thinking that it could do this. It can. That's what I was getting to. Oh, okay. Look at that. See, it's like I'm. It's like I'm a knitting genius already. Now there's a couple ways to do that. You can get fancy with um, shawl pins, and I wish I could find my other one. I have this really cool Scottish silver one I bought in an antique store one time. Okay. But you can also buy these off of Etsy. A lot of people make them. And they're just, when you make a shawl or a wrap, you want a way to hold it on. So you just would put it on here, mm -hmm. use your shawl pin, and pin it together. All right. Easy enough, right? So you could do that. And there's all kinds of cool, like funky Viking looking ones that you can have fun with. Um, I've seen some cool like wood ones and leather ones. You can do anything in the world. Another option are of course buttons. And every knitter or crafter is gonna have like their button jar or drawer or you know, some place that is just filled with an obscene amount of buttons. Mm -hmm. And then you'll inherit buttons from your grandmother or other crafters and you'll end up with so many buttons. It's a lot of fun. Can I take a second to tell you about one of my favorite childhood books? Yes. By uh, Ruth Chu called The Witch's Buttons. <laughs> and it's about a girl whose grandmother indeed has a jar of buttons. And one of the buttons turns out to be a uh, warlock whose sister had turned him into a button as a curse in the 1700s and he was to remain a button as long as he was tied to something as long as he was sewn on to something and so this little girl takes the button off of this piece of fabric that was in the jar and the dude like reconstitutes and he's like all right we got to go get my sister and we got to get her magic buttons uh, this is a great book that is an amazing plot for a book i love it now, when you do buttons, there's a couple different ways. Um, you can do it like where you plan it out beforehand and you're gonna have a buttonhole, which you didn't do, but you do have some yarn overs, which are kind of accidental buttonholes. So if one happens to line up with where you would like a button, mm -hmm. that can work for you. Another option is to take a crochet hook and where'd my yarn go? Now you did say on our last episode that you had learned how to crochet a chain. chain stitches, yeah? And in fact, in Boy Scouts, we would sometimes store rope by doing like finger crocheting. You would finger crochet your 100 foot rope into a you know, 15 foot rope or whatever. Yeah. So you can, for a buttonhole, make a little crochet chain stitch And then you would just bind it off and sew it on as a little loop onto your piece. Oh, okay. Okay. And then that's, you know, that could be a nice way to attach it. So there's a lot of ways to do things. I always tell people too, and I shouldn't because I love these things so much and I want them all to myself. But anytime you go to like a thrift store or Goodwill or something like that, if you can ever find sweater guards. Okay. These are my favorite things in the world. They were really big in like the 50s and 60s when people wore cardigans a lot. You put your cardigan over your shoulders and then put your sweater guard on and it keeps it on your shoulders and looks really pretty. So anytime I find these, I buy them because I love them so much. 
So it's another good way to like finish a shawl or something is to use sweater guards because you can adjust the length on them and it just looks neat. Is cutting a buttonhole in this ever an option? You do not want to cut your knitting right. unless you have felted it. So because you have wool, you could felt it, which is where you wash it and agitate it and make everything shrink down. Okay. And it becomes a piece of cuttable fabric. Okay. Another way is if you were to kind of sew around, mm -hmm. you know, then you could cut a buttonhole that way as well. That'd be a little bit more advanced though. Okay. So we're talking about either putting a loop on it or finding an Icelandic uh, shawl in. Yes. Are my, are my two options. So I'm going to look at those options uh, over the next week. And when we meet again, uh, we'll hopefully have some uh, pictures to show. That'll be great. Yay, Kyle. <laughs>